Mouthpiece ventilation is a method of providing continuous, up to full respiratory support for people who can simply grab a mouthpiece. It uh, permits us to completely do away with tracheostomy tubes for most people with uh, neuromuscular weakness or inspiratory muscle weakness for any reason. I've been using mouthpiece ventilation for my patients uh, since I was a resident in physical medicine and rehabilitation at New York University in 1977. However, I met patients there who have been using it since 1953. So I now have patients who have been using mouthpiece ventilation for full daytime respiratory support for 59 years and many over 55 years. When, when people have weak muscles for any reason, weak inspiratory muscles, um, they can have those because of a neuromuscular condition, a neuromuscular disease like muscular dystrophy or Lou Gehrig's disease or spinal muscular atrophy or older people who have spent a month or two in intensive care units can get so weak that they just become too weak to breathe. Now, what usually happens is, is that, for example, in the outpatient who's getting weaker, they develop symptoms of under-breathing. And in particular, they underventilate their lungs when they're sleeping. And they develop symptoms like morning headaches and daytime drowsiness and difficulty concentrating and fatigue and so on. Now, those patients need to be started on non-invasive ventilation um, and, and in particular, nasal ventilation is the most um, commonly used and preferred. When patients are using nasal ventilation at night and they're still getting weaker, they discover that when they try to discontinue it in the morning, they get short of breath. So when they take that nose piece off and they're not using their ventilator anymore, they get short of breath and they get to the point where they leave it on. They have to leave it on. Now, they may need it for short periods of time during the daytime, um, and eventually they need it around the clock, but nobody wants to be hooked up through the nose to a ventilator all day. Uh, so at the point in which they start using it during the daytime, we switch them to a, a 15 millimeter angled mouthpiece. We put the mouthpiece near their mouth so that they can rotate their necks and grab the mouthpiece, and they can supplement their ventilation anytime they want to that way. So we have taken out the tracheostomy tubes of patients with Lou Gehrig's disease who got them because they were too weak to breathe, which is never a reason to get a tracheostomy tube. Uh, so we've taken them out, and we had one case where the man was on trach ventilation for two years. We took out his tube because his throat muscles were strong, and he went another eight years before his throat muscles got so weak that he needed a trach tube. And he got the trach tube that second time, and he died six months later from complications of the tracheostomy tube, which is what most people die from when they get tracheostomy tubes. So the tracheostomy tube makes you more dependent on the ventilator. There is no question about that. Patients who are ventilated through trach tubes, as opposed to people who are ventilated 24 hours a day non-invasively, the trach patients have more hospitalizations, more pneumonias, significantly more than the patients ventilated non-invasively. And in the study that we did on over 700 people, we controlled for throat muscle function by eliminating patients who had stomach tubes, gastrostomy tubes. We only wanted people who could not breathe and were either dependent on the ventilator non-invasively or invasively. And we found that the non-invasively managed patients were essentially never hospitalized for any respiratory problems. And you know, my patients now are approaching 60 years of continuous non-invasive ventilatory support. Uh, they, most of them have not been hospitalized for a respiratory problem in many decades. It does take some time to usually teach people how to use mouthpiece ventilation as opposed to nasal ventilation because if you put a nose piece on someone and put them on the ventilator with it, all they have to do is keep their mouth shut and breathe through the nose. That's all they have to do and they get the air. However, with a mouthpiece, Number one, they have to learn to prevent the air from leaking out of the nose. So they have to learn to use their soft palate to block off the back of the throat so that the air doesn't go out of the nose. And that can take 10 minutes. 
You know, one of the problems with nasal and mask ventilation, where you cover the nose and the mouth, is that how do you feed the patient? Well, with mouthpiece ventilation, you have no problem at all. They get a deep breath, and then they eat and swallow, and then they take another deep breath, and they go from there. Glossopharyngeal breathing, what we call frog breathing, is the use of your glottis, your throat, to piston boluses of air into the lungs to ventilate your lungs. So for example, um, someone with no muscles below the neck whatsoever and zero milliliters of vital capacity can breathe all day long by using their throats in this way. That is a full breath. I get 600 milliliters of air with six or seven gulps. Like that. Now, the reason why that is very useful for people using mouthpiece ventilation as opposed to tracheostomy tubes is, well, first of all, when you're ventilated through a trach tube, you cannot glossopharyngeal breathe. Of course, of course, the air just leaks out the tube. If you don't have a hole in your neck, which you don't need in the first place, you can glossopharyngeal breathe instead of using your ventilator during the daytime. But if you're using mouthpiece ventilation, let's say that you have zero milliliters of vital capacity and you're grabbing that mouthpiece, uh, say for a thousand milliliters of air six times a minute. Well, if you're able to frog breathe between grabbing the mouthpiece, you don't have to grab the mouthpiece so much. So we published a study perhaps a couple of years ago where we showed that people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy who could frog breathe well uh, only had to grab the mouthpiece once a minute or twice a minute instead of four or five times a minute. And people with spinal cord injury and polio, when they learn how to frog breathe and ventilate themselves non-invasively instead of through trach tubes, they can literally go all day long without using any ventilator at all just by glossopharyngeal breathing. So they never have to worry about their tracheostomy tube getting dislodged uh, or their ventilator failing and dying from asphyxiation or suffocation or respiratory failure.